Okay, we're live on Facebook. Hello, everybody. This is uh, Dr. Roger Paul, and tonight we're going to continue our study on energy, mind, and matter. And that's uh, the section we're in is section nine, and that starts on page 479 of the original book. And we're in section 9.1. So let's say a little prayer and we'll get started. Don't you get nasty with my cords there. Father, thank you for bringing us together tonight that we might study your wonderful revelation. We thank you for the opportunity to do this. We thank you for all those who come and listen to our meetings, both live and uh, by YouTube and Vimeo and Facebook. Uh, we thank you for those that study with us and learn it. And we pray that they remember a little bit so they can share it with others. And we pray that you let us remember a little bit so we can take it to the mansion worlds with us. And be prepared. We say this in the name of your son, Michael, Jesus of Nazareth, and our creative mother spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay. Natural philosophy. Who's up first? That's you, dear. On mute. Alarm dogmatic. What? You are muted. Yep. Religion is not alone dogmatic. Natural philosophy equals ten, equally tends to dogmatize. When a renowned religious teacher reasoned that the number seven was fundamental to nature because there are seven openings in the human head, if he had known more of chemistry, he might have advocated such a belief founded on a true phenomena of the physical world. There is in all the physical universes of time and space, notwithstanding the manifestation of the decimal constitution of energy, the ever-present reminder of the reality of the sevenfold electronic organization of pre-matter. Mm. Okay, why do you think there's a sevenfold electronic organization of pre-matter? Because of their seven master spirits. Right? Mm. Seven master spirits. That's why there's uh, start from the beginning, the beginning of everything. Everything's got seven different, uh, seven different personalities of the combination of the Trinity, right? That's where the seven master spirits come from. Each one of them is a different variation from the combination of the three parts of the, the Trinity, right? Remember that one? God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, God the Father and Son, God the Father and Spirit, the Son and the Spirit, right? Which one did I forget? And the combination of all three, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, right? And each one individually. So that's the seven combinations. So that is why there are seven combinations of all physical matter, okay? Philosophically which is hard for us to understand. So that's why there's seven, supposedly seven openings in your head, you know, at least for most people anyway, right? All right, let's keep going. Uh, Pam, would you take the next one, please? The number seven is basic to the central universe and the spiritual system of inherent transmissions of character. But the number 10, the decimal system, is inherent in energy matter and the material creation. Nevertheless, the atomic world does display a certain periodic characterization, which recurs in groups of seven. A benchmark carried by this material world, indicative of its far distant spiritual origin. Can you so, clarify so, that? Yes, yeah, since I, everything is spiritual, all reality is really spiritual. It's hard for us to understand, but the real reality is all based on spirit, not material. Okay, and that's that's hard for us to even wrap our head around. So everything in the physical world is a copy of the far distant distant spiritual origin. So everything that's material is a copy of something spiritual. So if you go back to the original, everything is spiritual. Now, another thing here that's really interesting is all the 
uh, seven super universes, the material, the energy matter and material creation is all based on the decimal system. Number the ten, and tens, and that's why there's a hundred constellations in each of the seven super universes. You know, that's that's why everything is in tens. But it's interesting, then it reverts back to sevens. Okay, and even more interesting, there's also a, a connection to twelves, you know, which makes it even more interesting. And uh, we may not get into that tonight, but. Let's go on to the next, the sevenfold first. If you understand the sevenfold, you pretty much have everything else. All right, so Jane, I think you were up. There. Well, it rearranged me again, didn't it? Huh? Rodney's turn. Rodney, you're up. Jane was close. there, they swapped places. Yes. Um, does this, do spirits have uh, automatons? Yes. Matter? Yes. Every everything in every reality, Rodney, has automatons. And that includes the reality of the Marancha. And then it includes the reality of the spirit. And that includes all seven types of reality of the spirit. Okay. Which is really interesting. But the question, the big question is this. Uh, it talks about that because of the material in Havona, but it doesn't really clarify the reality of paradise, mm -hmm. even though they call it ultimate, right? There's, they don't clarify that very much. Gary. If what you're saying is there's some physical form to the spiritual side. Yes. Yes, there is. So if there's like um, midwayers, uh, angels that are just a step above us that's booming around us, guardian angels, right. etc. Why don't we walk into them? We do walk into them. We walk right through them. They walk They're different. Us. They walk through us. They're you know, different when, frequencies. They vibrate at a different frequency, so we don't interfere with each other. We just go right through each other. That's why angels can walk through walls. Okay, so if I lived in a house that had a different frequency from me, I could walk from room to room without using doors. Yes. Yes. That's that's literally true. Now, let me give you an example of that. You know, you know when I have uh, referred back to, uh, what, what's that? program there skinwalker ranch okay they have shot rockets material rockets these are physical rockets right made here in the good old usa or china probably up into the atmosphere okay and time after time again when they get to a certain altitude they hear some hit something and veer off to one side or the other Okay. At the skin, skin ranch. At the Skinwalker Ranch. That's why I've said multiple times what I think there is probably either a, a, a material, a, a, a Marancha building there, or a spiritual building there that this, these physical rockets are interacting with on the molecular level that's causing them to bear off. Okay. <clears throat> Because they're on a different frequency, but they may be, these rockets may create a frequency when they're shot up in the air that is close enough to that material of that frequency that it re is reflecting these things off. See what I'm saying? So back to your question, Gary, if your house is superimposed, physical house is superimposed on a Marancha house or a Marancha location. That Marancha location could be built right on top of your house and you would never know it was there. You would walk right through the Marancha walls over and over and over again. And the same thing with the spiritual structure. Okay, so look at it this way. Since we have guardian angels, right? All of us 
have guardian angels, at least four, right? Two seraphim and Sanabim and a, and a uh, cherubim. cherubim, right? So all of us have these four, four angels. When they're not on duty, the two, two of them don't have to be on duty at all the time, right? At, only two of them have to be on duty all the time. So when they're not on duty, they could have a physical location right in your house that is their room, if you would, and you would not know that it was there. So they could have a place to go retire to, and you don't even know they're there. That so when you where go, dust comes from. <laughs> that can be where dust comes from. So when you go in your kitchen and you're making supper, you may be making supper right in the middle of the bed of the angels. Think about that, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or you could be taking a shower in the angel's bedroom, right? <laughs> sounds it weird, but it could be, you know? Uh, so that's, that's something to think about. But all these things still have automatons because they're of some type of physical structure, right? Mm. They're on a different frequency. That's why we don't see them. That's why we don't feel them. That's why they're not tactile to our touch because they're not physical in the sense that we know physical, but they're physical in the sense of that type of reality. You know, I wonder if we could have like a pair of field glasses, which we could change the frequency for which we see mm -hmm. what we would see. And maybe. Well, you know, look at look at the 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 glasses they have now they can they can detect uh frequencies that our eyes won't pick up right like the infrared and that sort of thing now maybe the things we're talking about are not within that frequency but maybe some of them are because some of the times when these people go out looking for bigfoot and uh, ghosts and all these other things they pick up shadows and things of things that are not physical Right. Mm -hmm. But if they can see us, if the angels can see maybe us, we should say, maybe we should say that we're picking up things that aren't in our frequency. Yeah, they aren't. Uh, unmute, dear, so people can hear what you have to say. No, what I was saying is, when if the angels, um, they can't, we can't see them, but they can see us. They must. Um, wouldn't we get in their way? Would they want to be away from us or would they? I mean, in other words, if they're sleeping in their bed and we're, you know, having dinner, <laughs> I mean, wouldn't that be a conflict of, you know? Might I, be. I don't, I don't know. know. It's weird. Yeah. But aren't we on different planes? It. We're on we're different, different planes. Yeah, yeah but, but they're, they're also observing, observing us, us, you know, and, and watching, watching over, over us. us. Well, we have to remember that the angels can see within our frequency can they not right mm -hmm. so they can see everything physical it's just us who can't see them so since they could see everything physical wouldn't it make sense that when we were present they would get out of our way so you know yeah. well you know um, you mentioned that skinwalker ranch where the uh, rockets veer off at a certain altitude yeah and uh, we're on, somebody mentioned we're on different planes. Yeah. You know, like altitudes, you know, like, you know, maybe we're there, their zero, ground zero is eight feet above us or something like that. Or, Good or in the Skinwalker Ranch thing, maybe 350 feet in the air is ground zero for them. Right. Right. So that would explain for a lot of things, except for jets flying through them and stuff like that. Yeah, desk, now, the paper in their desk. Yeah, well, there's other things too, like the appearance of these uh, lights or U U U UFOs and that sort of thing coming, traveling through space at this unbelievable amounts of speed and then just disappearing, right? They may be popping in and out of our reality or our frequency, right? Makes sense. You know, yeah, everything. Yeah, everything in the world has an explanation, right? It, it really does. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. Rodney, would you take the next one, please? 
Ah, yes. yes. The sevenfold persistence of creature constitution. Creative, except- con- creative constitution. What I say? Creature. Creature, yeah. The yeah. sevenfold persistence of creative constitution is exhibited in the chemical domains as a reoccurrence of similar physical and chemical properties in segregated periods of seven when the basic elements are arranged in the order of their atomic weights. When the Urantia chemical elements are thus arranged in a row, any given quality or property tends to recur by sevens. This periodic change by sevens recurs diminishingly and with variations throughout the entire chemical table, being Mm. most markedly observable in the earlier or lighter atomic groupings. Starting from any one element, after noting some one property, such as equality, will change for six consecutive elements. But on reaching the eighth, it tends to reappear. That is, the eighth chemically active element resembles the first, the ninth, the second, and so on. Such a fact of the physical world unmistakably points to the sevenfold constitution of ancestral energy and is indicative of the fundamental reality of the sevenfold diversity of the creations of time and space. Man should also note that there are seven colors in the natural spectrum. Yeah, we looked at all these charts with all these sevens that kept recurring, right? Music and light and and all these different things. And they're talking about that if you look at the these, I, I have two different periodic tables here. And each one of them are arranged according to different things. But what they're what I wanted to point out to y'all is this: if you take a basic table you see my cursor there at the mouse yeah yes yeah there there it goes okay what they're saying here is this if you take the first element now this one is not arranged uh i I don't know if it's arranged by weight or not but that's what they're saying is if you arrange them by weight every seventh one so if you go one two three four five six and on the seventh it changes Okay, and then you go seven more, and on the eighth, it changes, right? Well, on the eighth, it changes, and then on the next one, it would be what? On on the eighth one, past the next seven, changes again, and that's that's what he's saying is this change in the elements indicate the difference of the seven types of deity okay even in our chemical elements and that is true for all seven super universes now remember i talked about this it talks about us having what a hundred types of uh material in the seven super universes and everybody gets out these tables and they see it depends on which table you look at this one's got what 118 doesn't it elements right yeah Yeah. and if we go down to this one it's got the 118 but you'd think it was 103 because this down here but it's not because these are inserted here so what is what is it talking about with these extra elements these are element combinations with within the hundred okay that's what I'm talking about here. So if you don't understand that, you'll get this confusion and say that that's not true, right? I had a big deal about this at one of the Urantia conventions back in the 70, 
eight, I think it was. Anyway, anyway. Okay, Jane, would you take the next one for us? But not all the suppositions of natural philosophy are valid. For example, the hypothetical ether, which represents an ingenious attempt of man to unify his ignorance of space phenomena, the philosophy of the universe cannot be pre predicated on the observations of so-called science. If such a metamorphosis could not be seen, a scientist would be inclined to deny the possibility of developing a butterfly out of a caterpillar. That's pretty simple, isn't it? Butterfly out of a ca ca caterpillar, but they can't explain that, right? How that happens. So uh, not all of the suppositions that, that we come up with are, are valid in the universe, okay? We, this is our attempt to make sense of reality as we know it. Okay, and we have to realize that, you know, when you, uh, what is the old saying? Uh, an intelligent man uh, becomes intelligent by realizing how stupid he really is, right? Because <laughs> there's always somebody more intelligent than you are, no matter who you are, or who you think you are, right? There's always somebody else that's going to come along that's a little bit more keener than you are, right? Okay, so this is us trying to justify ourselves. All right, Lech, would you take the next one? Okay. Uh, physical stability associated with biological elasticity is present in nature only because of the well-nigh infinite wisdom possessed by the master architects of creation. Nothing less than transcendental wisdom could ever design units of matter which are at the same time so stable and so efficiently flexible. Did, did y'all know anybody that's got infinite wisdom? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> if you do, I'd like to meet them myself. So, Okay. Uh, Gary, would you take number 10, non Spiritual energy systems, material mind systems. Take that first paragraph. Number 10, universal non-spiritual energy systems, material mind systems. The endless sweep of relative cosmic reality from the absoluteness of paradise, uh, manota to the... Manusha, yeah. Mo, mo, uh, is that it right? Mo, uh, Nisha? Yeah, that's fine. Close enough. M okay, Manada. Manisha? It's Madada, but yeah. Ma Paradise Madada, right. Paradise Madada to the absoluteness of space potenci potency is uh, suggestive of certain elevations of relationship in the non spiritual realities of the first source and center those realities which are concealed in space potentially potency. space potency. potency right space potency revealed in Mo monada. Monada. monada yeah and provisionally disclosed on the intervening cosmic levels these eternal uh, cycle of energy being circulated in the father of universes is absolute and being absolute is ex expanso mm -hmm. in neither fact nor value. Nevertheless, the primal father is even now, as always, self-realizing of an ever-expanding area of time, space, and of time, space transcended, meaning and uh, arena of changing relationships within energy matter is being progressively subjected to the over control of living and divine spirit through the experiential uh, striving of living and personal mind. Now you got to translate that for me. That was Greek. <laughs> was so Italian thrown okay. in. Okay. If you didn't, if you hadn't read the forward of the book, this would seem like gobbledygook to you, 
Okay, and even though you read the forward of the book, if someone doesn't interpret it for you, you have no idea in heaven what the heck they're talking about, do you? Right? Okay, so that's why you have idiots like me trying to put the pieces together, right? All right, and that's my job. So here we go. I'm going to try to put the pieces together for you. Let's look at this, the, the title to this. Universal non-spiritual energy systems and it says material mind systems in parentheses okay so what does that first line tell us it tells us they're talking about non-spiritual energy systems and what non-spiritual energy system are we familiar with the only one i know of is the unqualified absolute right For the unqualified absolute is part of the universal father, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Am I still on it? Okay. Mm -hmm. So what they're saying here is this is a non-spiritual energy system that is controlled by a material mind system. What would be a material mind system? That would include the unqualified absolute because the unqualified absolute has mind, right? <clears throat> it also would include the infinite spirit, wouldn't it? Because the in infinite spirit controls what? All material mind circuits, all of them, okay? So for this to work, we have to include the unqualified absolute, and at least the eternal spirit. Now, let's go down to the par paragraph here, right? It starts out talking about the absoluteness of paradise manada. What is manada? That's what one of the things that paradise is made up of, right? And the absoluteness of space potency. Where do you get space potency come in? That's what the unquote qualified absolute takes and creates in what cre creates what poussant energy this is pre-energy make sense you still with me hadn't lost anybody yet right and these things these two things the fact that manada comes from paradise and space potency is manipulated by the unqualified absolute it suggests that there's a relationship of these non-spiritual realities, which include the unqualified absolute with the first source and center. And how is that? Because the unqualified absolute, like all seven of the absolutes are all part of what? Godhead. The father. Godhead, the father, that's right. You can't have the unqualified absolute outside of God the father right? We all dwell, dwell, and dwell and have our being within God the Father, right? Okay, so those realities of God the Father, all right, are concealed in this space potency, okay, which is the pre poussant energy, and in Manada, which is the material of paradise, right? So what do we have so far? We have potency that comes from the unqualified absolute, right? Then we have paradise and a mind controlling this, this part of the infinite spirit. And guess what else is involved? The manada comes from paradise. So we have paradise, the unqualified absolute, and the infinite spirit, all three working on these un, these disclosed intervening cosmic levels, these levels in between material reality, right? So you have three parts of the God of the seven, God the seven, not God the seven, the seven absolutes working together right there, okay? So you're with me so far, right? Yeah. So it, it, we, we still good, okay? So you have this, so, eternal circle of energy. What are they talking about? It comes from 
paradise, it goes back to paradise, right? Mm -hmm. This energy is a constant circuit, right? And, and it's, it's in circuited in the Father's universe. Everything in the universe has a circuit of energy, okay? Mm -hmm. It's absolute and being absolute, it's, it's experience. Expans it expansiveness, if you want to, if that's a word, is not a fact or a value, it just is. In other words, you can't have anything outside of God the Father. Okay, so expands at the will of only God the Father. You with me? Mm -hmm. So its expansiveness is not a fact or a value it just is i am that i am that i am that's reality okay and it says nevertheless the primal father even now as always self-realizing and ever-expanding arena of time and space that's where the father acts doesn't he how does he act he acts through the infinite spirit and the son right all right it transcends space and time because some of the things in this universe are not just physical. They are what? Transcendental. They transcend normal matter and reality. Okay? So they're transcendental. Uh, and they have meanings and relationship remember through the urantia book it keeps saying meanings and values meanings and values meanings and values these things are the things the ideas of god the father and there's no way outside them okay and it says in an arena of changing relationships within energy matter Okay, so that's the energy and the materials constantly changing, progressively subjected to the over control of the living and divine spirit. Who is that? The infinite spirit, right? Through the experiential striving of living and personal minds. So the infinite spirit controls the mind circuit. We're having experience as beings within this reality, right? And that's how the God, the Supreme, is de developing. That's the experiential part. So as God, the Supreme, develops, we expand our experiential relationship within the seven super universes. And guess what happens when we all reach light and light? We all know each other. We step <laughs> off into a new reality. We all turn into seventh stage spirits okay that's why the the god the supreme does not come into full fruition till every single being in the seven super universes reach light and light and then reality as we know it changes immediately from the sixth stage of spiritual existence to what the seventh stage of spiritual existence. That's a mouthful in a paragraph, is it not? Mm -hmm. You did good. Roger, do you think it's ever gonna happen? <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's got to happen. God has God has projected it will happen. As long as anything that God the Father wills is. As far as God the Father is concerned, he's already seen this happen. He knows it's going to happen, right? It's just us that have to wait on it, right? You have something to say, Gary? Gary? Yeah, a week ago, you complimented me on the uh, finding out the... Uh, uh, Meaning of life? Yeah, or something like that. And uh, yeah. where the energy was coming from God and be... All energy was coming from God and gone out from God. And right. uh, thus the universe was always expanding because it was going out from God. Now right. today we found that the energy is being basically reprocessed. Yes, one, it's a big, it's a cosmic circle, right? Okay, it's then how circle. did one yeah. equal the other? Well, it never stops, uh, Gary. It's You have to think of it as a... Uh, really it's not a circle it's an oval okay it's a cosmic oval 
And it starts in paradise and goes out and encompasses all of the seven super universes and all the outer space levels also. And then it returns back to paradise, the dwelling place of God the Father. So it's a constant evolution of growth as it goes back out, but it refurbishes itself as it comes back into paradise and to God the Father. So in essence, you can think of it as the respiration of God, right? So you can say, well, my thinking, my thought is as the energy goes out and it comes back, mm -hmm. that's right. a constant. Therefore, the universe does not grow. But if it comes back to God and God adds more to it, then yeah. the universe can grow. Constantly. So basically, I just yeah. answered the question because yeah. God brings the universe out and he brings the universe back. So he and, exhales and inhales energy and the universe yeah. goes, you with, want to look at it that way. With each one of those cycles, Gary, uh, Gary also the material reality of the universe expands, right? So every time God takes a breath, everything expands. When he takes a breath back in, it's still expanding. Right. It's a constant cycle over and over and over again. Right. Now. I got a nice little chart here. And let me let me start at the top and let me show you why. Uh, I put this in here. Notice, notice it says universal non-spiritual energy systems, material mind systems. All right. What? do what system are we talking about we're talking about the infinite spirit are we not <clears throat> right and the number four on this is the cosmic mind it comes from the infinite spirit okay and the sevenfold diversified mind of time and space one favor which is the administration administered by each of the seven master spirits. So the cosmic mind, if you would, is divided up into seven fragments, right? My camera just went out. Uh, into seven fragments, and each of the seven master spirits gets a fragment, right? A phase. Yeah, it's a phase, seven phases, right? Then we have number three, evolving Marantia minds. That's what we do when we become Marantia beings, right? Our mind expands. It's the expanding consciousness of evolving, uh, evolving ascendant careers. Now, what happens when we do that? The supreme grows because of what? Experiential experience, right? Okay. And then we have the seven adjutant mind spirits. This is still the infinite spirit. The seven spirits of the local universe mother spirit. And it lists those over on the left side there. The seven, you know, uh, intuition, understanding, courage, knowledge, counsel, worship, and wisdom, right? And then we have still under mine, the pre-adjutant spirit minds. These are non-teachable intelligence of most Primitive forms of material life, but this, but this mind functions on many other levels. What are we talking about here? These are beings when a, a planet's first developing, human beings come along and they don't have enough brains to actually start think of spiritual things, do they? So they're in this pre-adjutant spirit, all right? Also, what else? All the animals, every single one of them, right? All right. And this is kind of interesting, too. This goes through the physical death and the soul's conception from birth. And it, it also has the seven psychic circles of soul achievement. All right. Uh, listed here. And you can read through those if you want to. You know, quest for personal values. Now, I'm not going to go into a great deal about those. But this all has to do with what? It has to do with non-spiritual energy systems, only mind systems. What happens when we go from being a human being 
to a Marantia being. All this changes, doesn't it? Because we don't need the adjutants anymore. We start stepping into Cosmic. the next phase, the cosmic mind. That's right. Okay, y'all are so smart. You know, you don't. Y'all don't need me. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's go on. Let's take uh, Diane. Would you take the very first one of those and the very the first pair sentence? Okay. Of the universal non-spiritual energies are reassociated in the living systems of non-creator minds on various levels, certain of which may be depicted as follows. One, pre-adjutant spirit minds. This level of mind is non-experiencing and on the inhabited world is ministered by the master physical controllers. This is, me is mechanical mind, the non-teachable intellect of the most primitive forms of material life, but the non-teachable mind function on many levels besides that of primitive planetary life. So this is the pre adjutant spirit mind. This would be mind that is so barbaric that the only way it can be taught anything is through the master physical controllers and be administered by them, okay? If you would, it's the beginning of the evolution of mind. Right. Okay. Can and you then explain, what, excuse me. Can yeah. you explain? Uh, this is the me mechanical mind. Like I got a dog right back there. Okay. Right. The non-teachable intellect of the most primitive forms of material life, but the non-teachable in mind functions on many levels besides that of the primitive planetary life. Okay. So where's my dog functioning at? He is not in this category, Gary. He's not okay. in the category, the pre-adjutant spirit minds. Let me tell you why. Your dog is under the adjutant mind spirits for the first five. Okay. So your dog is what? Teachable, intelligent mind. Right? Mm-hmm. That's why when you call your dog, he recognizes his, uh, his name and your voice, and he knows you want him to come, right? Because he's teachable. You give him a treat, and you can get him to stand on his hind leg. You can get him to roll over. You can get him to bark. You can get him to do just about anything except keep from peeing on the floor, right? <laughs> yeah. So what, where's these uh, primitive, the uh, mind functions on uh, many levels besides that of the primitive uh, planetary life? We're talking about then the uh, pond scum. Okay. Huh? Pond scum, some in insects probably. Uh, life that at the very beginning of the evolutionary process, you know, the amoeba at, before it, you know, gets legs and starts to crawl on the land, that sort of thing. OK, so this is the very first functioning and it's controlled by the master physical controllers. Why? Because they control that function of material at the very start level so that it can start putting things together so we can get to the point where we have adjutant spirit mind. And that's as the animals come from the pond scum onto the earth and become walking, living, breathing creatures. Right. And where's as many, many levels besides the primary pr primitive planetary life? What levels? Well, you, you would consider things like not only animals, but how about plants and things like that? They have a physical control that do certain things. How do plants know to pop up through the dirt and get the sunshine so they can grow and become flowers? Right? <laughs> instinct right but it's part of this pre-adjutant spirit mind that allows that to do it they don't have physical brains do they you know you ever yeah if you take a plant apart it's not got a brain does it it's just material right when you eat you know your salad for lunch you don't hear it screaming at you you're eating me you're eating me do you <laughs> thank god because it has no consciousness right that makes sense? If it okay. did, you wouldn't need anything, right? Right. 
Okay, so let's step on to the next one. Uh, Pam just stepped away. Uh, Rodney, would you take the next one? Yes, two adjutant spirit minds. This is the ministry of a local universe mother spirit functioning through her seven adjutant mind spirits on the teachable, non-mechanical level of material mind. <clears throat> on this level, material mind is experiencing as subhuman animal intellect in the first five adjutants. As human moral intellect in the seven adjutants, as superhuman midwear intellect in the last two adjutants. Okay. That's interesting. It is interesting. Now, one thing I have to mention here that we don't want to skip over, it says here, the non-mechanical, it just says teachable on the non-mechanical level of material mind, right? So what does that tell us? We have a mechanical level of material mind that takes care of certain functions that has nothing to do with the seven adjutants. <clears throat> and what would those functions be, right? Breathing. Breathing, that's right. Knowing what's hot and cold, right? These are all parts of the, uh, of the non-teachable mechanical level of material mind, right? And it mentions this in the previous paragraph, right? It says, this is mechanical mind and non-teachable. So there is mind that is mechanical. It will allow a creature to breathe. It will allow it to get hungry and all these other things that's, yeah. not, that's, that's mechanical, right? So as we as, as human beings have a teachable portion, right? And then we have a non-teachable portion, which is mechanical. And you know what they call that? The autonomic nervous system. Mm. It's part of your hindbrain, okay? This is the function of the brain that allows you to breathe, allows you to get hungry, and all these other things. It controls reflexes, things like that that you don't have to think about, right? Because if you had to think about it every now and then, you'd forget to breathe and what would happen? You'd die, die. right? Yeah, yeah it's a pretty, pretty handy thing to have, right? <laughs> All right. So then it tells us here that the animals, the subhuman, the animals, have intellect on the first five adjutants. What are they talking about here, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Here we go. The first five adjuant, adjutants would be what? Intuition, understanding, courage, knowledge, and counsel. All, all five of these your animals have. Including us. Okay. Including us. They don't have worship and wisdom. Now, mm. why is that important? Your dog doesn't know how to worship. Your cat doesn't know how to worship. Although if you hang around with them long enough, you think they worship each other sometimes, right? Well, they care. They care about each, each other, right? I mean, I don't know if y'all, about y'all, if you have more than one cat, if they hang out together it, when they're kittens, they'll hang out together the rest of their life if you let them stay together, okay? just the way it is. And this is part of those first five adjutants. They don't worship each other and they don't have wisdom. They don't get wiser, right? Mm. No matter how you'd like to think they do, they don't. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's okay. a learned yeah. response. So was it yeah. Andon and Fanta were the first to have wisdom? And uh, uh, what's the other word? Yeah, you know what I mean? Worship, worship and wisdom? wisdom? Yeah. Worship. It was Andon and Fonda. That's right, Letch. The first, the, the way they discovered that is uh, Andon first realized that there was a higher power than himself, right? And Fonda mm. followed. 
right? Yeah. That's the first human beings. Yeah, Gary. We have, they don't have knowledge and stuff, but they've taught gorillas and chimpanzees to communicate, you know, languages and stuff like that. Knowledge. Yeah. Isn't that wisdom? No. Or it's a trained response. Okay. It's a trained response. They teach them how to communicate so they can get something they want. You can teach a monkey how to hit a, hit a button to get a treat over and over and over and over and over again. They'll love on you. They'll care for you and all sorts of stuff, but that's not worship and it's not wisdom. They don't have a concept of a higher power than themselves other than you, which you are not a higher power, right? <laughs> Believe it or not. Uh -huh. My Although we got busted. people in our government that think they are powers. <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm. Okay. You wonder if they have worship and wisdom sometimes, you know, <laughs> you really do. Okay. So we have two different levels. We have non-teachable or, and then we have teachable, right? And the last two adjutants, the worship and wisdom gives us what? Moral intellect. Think about that. Why is this important? So if you have young kids that haven't been taught anything, okay, and they're running around killing each other and raping and stealing things and that sort of thing, are they acting any different than the animals? No. Right. No. They haven't developed worship and wisdom because they don't have not been taught right whose responsibility is that the adults parents. Parents. Parents, us right society right in in the thing and the way we see it going right now on tv and the internet and every every place else you'd think none of us have any morals wouldn't you right i mean yeah. it's it's pathetic all right now, I'm going to take this one step further. As superhumans, when do we be, start to become superhumans? <gasps> not Superman, right? My wife claims I'm Superman. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Superman. You step into the superhuman category when you become higher than human. And what's a good example of that? Midwayers and Marantia beings, right? Midwayers, intellect is on tap with the last two adjutants. And what is that? Worship and wisdom, right? So let me ask you a question. I know we're almost out of time. When we become, no, when, when the midwayers on this planet interact with human beings and they act like the last level I just talked about, the non-human, don't you think it just tears them apart? What do you mean? Because it's their job to help us out on the planet. And when we backslide, backstep into non-moral behavior as a planet, they see the planet in a struggle. And when they see the planet in a struggle, they feel like they're not doing their job. Right? So we have the last two years to blame on the midwayers. Yeah. No. Ugh. The mid brayers have the last two years to blame on non-morals being taught to our kids because that's the root of the problem. True. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right down the line. And I have preached tonight, right? Okay. Y'all want to try to get through these last two paragraphs real quick? Sure. Well, we won't get through this all. Let, let's take up evolving Marantia minds less next time. I didn't get very far tonight, but <laughs> did I make everything clear enough in these paragraphs? Because these are difficult wow. concepts to get. Yes. Huh? Yeah. 
Yes. Thank goodness. Thank you. Okay. All right. So we'll take up evolving Marantia mines next time. Try to keep this in, in mind of the different types for next time uh, as the animal, the moral, and the midwayer, right? That's the three levels. Midwayer would include also what? Stepping into the Marantia, right? Okay. That's our goal. Okay. Let's say a little prayer and we will close it down to, for tonight. Let me stop share. Whew. I talked and talked and talked and talked, didn't I? <laughs> uh, Lech, would you like to close us in prayer tonight? We haven't had you close in a while. Uh, okay. Um, well, I'll do my standard. Uh, That's fine. That's fine. Uh, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let the soul love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that we, we may not be so much concerned with being consoled, but rather with consoling. To be understood as to understand to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying to self that we are born to eternal life. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. And thank you everyone thank you. at home who's joined us on Facebook, YouTube, all the other thank you. things. Please come see us again. Let me stop my Facebook first. I'm not recording.